Hello, everyone. This is Alexander Horat, your host of the Morgan Millennial Minute Report. The show is brought to you by David Morgan of themorganreport.com. Today, we're going to be having a really special guest on the show today, and his name is Zach Booth, and he is a real estate wholesaler, and uh, we're just really happy to have him on the show today. Thanks for having me, man. It's good to be here. Oh, thank you. Could you tell the viewers a little bit about real estate wholesaling? For sure. For sure. So real estate wholesaling, um, what it is exactly is essentially how to get into real estate investing with very little money. So if any of you have heard like get into investing with no money and you hear these gurus and all these people with money, right? They might pop up in your ads or something, you know, with models or whatever. And, you know, that's what they're talking about, right? Real estate wholesaling. So what it is, is let's say, um, let's say I meet a guy, his name's Alexander. Okay. okay. And he, he wants to sell me a house. He doesn't want to deal with it. It's in bad condition. He doesn't want to deal with all of it, right? He essentially wants a pawn shop for the house. He wants speed and convenience over price. So his, his, he inherited the house from his mom and she was a hoarder. It's in bad shape. He just wants to be done with it, right? So he would call someone like me or he would get a postcard for me or whatever. And he would call and say, I want to sell my house. Right. I say, great. This is the price. You establish the price. Let's say Alexander is willing to sell me the house for, for a thousand or sorry, a hundred thousand dollars. And then I go to Bob the flipper and I say, Hey, Bob, you know, do you want to flip this house? What would you pay for this house? And Bob's like, I'd pay 150 grand for that house. I say, great. I'm going to sell you my purchase contract for 50 grand. You pay me 50, you pay a hundred thousand dollars for the house. It's yours. So I got paid 50 grand for finding the deal. Oh, right. Wow. So it's real estate wholesaling. It's like flipping houses without ever having to officially buy the house. Oh, right. Wow. Yeah. That so, sounds like a really good idea. Yeah. So then the question is, well, how the heck do you find properties at that big of a discount? How do you do it? Is it really possible? Right. And why would people do it at, at that much of a, you know, that high level? Like, would they really do that? Um, and can you do a lot of them? So <clears throat> I started off um, as a window cleaner. So when I was 17 years old, uh, I had worked for a bunch of people. I had framed houses and finished carpentry and mowed lawns. I had done all sorts of different jobs and I wanted to work for myself. So I started this window cleaning business, right? I grew this window cleaning business for a decade. And, um, you know, from the outside looking in, I was super successful. You can look me up, you know, go to window cleaning ventures and you can see window cleaning tutorial videos of me with millions and millions of views. I ended up on the history channel because of it. I mean, I did that for a long time, had, had somewhat of a successful business, but it wasn't, I started having children and life started happening and it just wasn't the life that I wanted to provide for my family. So uh, I had read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and it talked about how great real estate investing was and how it could change your life and everything else. And so I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. I want to get into real estate investing, but I kept having all these issues. Sorry, let me, uh, let me fix my Wi-Fi. I think I'm having issues. Okay, never mind. My bad. Um, so I was having all these issues with, with getting into real estate investing. They wanted down payments, you know, 25% down and my debt to income ratios. And I was having issues getting financing to buy houses. I was able to get one but the next one they wanted more down and I just had all these obstacles. So I was like, well, how do I get into this business without having, having all this money or having a rich uncle or whatever else? And, and then I learned about real estate wholesaling. Right. And um, so I was like, okay, I want to, I want to do more of that. I want to do real estate wholesaling. And it was tough. It was a hard road. And I eventually invested into a coach, hired a coach and um, gave me the steps and, and I started having a ton of success um, one of the things that I started doing that he didn't necessarily teach me is I did something called driving for dollars. So the concept is when someone wants to sell a house for speed and convenience, it's usually because a house is a thorn in their side, right? They want a pawn shop for the house. Right. Yeah. So, so if someone has a house, that's a thorn in their side, they're probably not going to go plant flowers and pick the weeds and mow the grass. They're not going to fix the peeling paint. There's going to be physical science and neglect. So what I started doing is driving around my neighborhoods and the neighborhoods around me and looking for houses with physical signs of neglect and reaching out to those people, right? And seeing if they wanted a sale. And I started making a ton of money. The first year I did it, you know, heavily, I made almost a half a million dollars doing it, you know, wow. it changed my life. And um, 
And the next year we did $1.2 million. Right. And so, um, throughout that process, I started coaching and helping other people, right. And teaching them how to do what I do and, and being able to help them. And I found that there was a lot of people like myself in the beginning that were skeptical or didn't believe in it or didn't, you know, believe they could do it. They sound so it's too good to be true. There's the market's too hot. No one would sell their house at that much of a discount. So I actually went out and did a 40 day challenge to show people how possible it was and how it's a lot of hard work, but it's really not that complicated of a process. Um, so this January, I actually went and did that, that 40 day challenge. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about the challenge you did? Yeah. So the, the challenge was to <clears throat> take a thousand bucks and I wanted to make 40 grand in 40 days. Right. Um, and I was like, well, I can't do it where I live. Cause then people will be like, well, you have the connections, you have friends, you have, you know, your team, you have all that stuff. So I went to somewhere I'd never been. I flew from Utah to Tampa, Florida. I'd never been to Tampa. The reason I picked Tampa is it was warm, right? And it was January. So I went to Tampa, rented an Airbnb in a car. And the goal is to take that thousand bucks and go do real estate wholesaling. Go find people that wanted to sell for a discount and, you know, for speed and convenience over price and make money. So um, I went there and I had a ton of success and I had a film guy follow me and I documented it day by day and I have it for free to view on my YouTube channel, actually. Oh, wow. That's uh, pretty interesting. So just as kind of a question for me is uh, how many people do you have to cold call to get one deal? Uh, what's your average? Yeah, well, it depends on the market. So a more expensive market, you know, a house that's worth half a million, like in California, your average wholesale price should be 10% of that. So if the house is fixed up or worth half a million, your assignment fee, your wholesale fee, you should shoot for 50 grand, right? So on, on places where you're going to make 50 grand, where like in Indiana, where your houses are worth 60, 70,000 fixed up in some places, you're only going to make six grand. So the, the market will depend largely. So your, your higher price point markets, you're going to have to spend more mar money on marketing because your price, your profits are going to be higher, right? Or, or your gross profits. So um, in Utah, my average deal size is 30 grand, right? And we're having to call a lot, um, a lot, a lot. I don't have those exact numbers in front of me and I can pull up my exact numbers. Just give me two seconds. Okay. Pulling up my KPI sheet so I can share those exact numbers and not just blow smoke here. So I'm going to share with you my number. So once we generate these marketing lists um, and we use an app called Deal Machine, you guys can see exactly how we're doing it on the 40 day challenge. Um, but here we go. So I, I do cold calling, texting and postcards to the list. So I'm doing this in Tampa now, as well as Utah. So in Utah so far for this year, we've made $924,000 or 24, 200, sorry, $924,200 so far in Utah. Uh, 134,500 has come from cold calling. Uh, we dialed for 1,204 hours um, to get four contracts. Um, so it's, it's about 500 hours, 550 hours per deal, right? But four deals, we made 134 grand. Um, so I'm making a little over a hundred bucks an hour off of dialing, but I pay people to dial for me. Um, and I pay them like 18 an hour. So, and then off of texting. So, so cold calling requires a lot more time. It's a pretty cheap way to do it. If you're doing it yourself, that's the strategy that I use for the 40 day challenge. I did a lot of cold calling myself, um, a lot better at it. And a lot of my cold callers, I had a lot of success in just a short amount of time there. Uh, texting, texting, we sent 82,000 text messages, 82,833 to be exact. We made 147 grand, um, and uh, let's see, postcards, we sent 115,834 postcards for a whopping $416,000 that we made. Wow. 
How much do you think all those postcards cost? They cost me $39,383.56. But, you know, 39 grand, it might seem like a ton, right? If you don't have 39,000, but I made 416. So when I first started, I didn't send this kind of quantity, right? I wasn't working, you know, I didn't have this much marketing and I didn't have much. That's why I did the 40 day challenge to show people what it took to get to where I'm at now. Um, is you can bootstrap this. You can hustle your butt off. Like I, on the 40 day challenge, there was a four day stint that I never left the house. I cold called from the time I woke up to the, to the, till I went to bed. Right. And it sucked. It's it horrible, but it's, you know, working like that and doing that, it's allowed me to build the business that I have now, um, where I don't have to text or cold call or even go on the appointments. And I have a team that does it for me. And I get to just look at the numbers and I know how much I spend and how much I made. Right. That's, that's what I do. Yeah, definitely. Well, that seems pretty interesting. Uh, what were some of the biggest um, hurdles basically starting your company, uh, changing over from your the window cleaning business to doing wholesaling? Uh, a couple things. The first thing was believing that it was possible, right? That was, there was a lot of fear there and a lot of insecurity to walk away from from something that was paying the bills and something that I understood and it did for a long time. Um, and then the next thing was finding the right person to help me. So I wouldn't have had success if I wouldn't have hired my mentor. So I hired Tom Kroll to teach me the process and the steps of wholesaling and how to do this business. And uh, it changed my life. And, um, you know, I'm a coach and I can help people and I help people through this process um, you know, and if you guys want to talk to me about that, I can help you, but I'm not the only coach out there, right? If, if you think I'm only saying to go get a coach because I want you to sign up, I tell people all the time that don't join my program, find a different coach, right? I, I really think if you want to be successful, you got to find someone that can outline the steps, you know, don't hire a coach that's going to sell you a package of information, right? Go listen to podcasts and YouTube for YouTube for information. You want a coach that's going to give you the step-by-step -step outline to do your first deal. Um, so the next thing that I struggled with was getting the right mentor. I paid 10 grand for the wrong mentor. It was a huge mistake. Uh, sucked, you know, and then I paid nine grand for Tom Kroll and, um, super glad I did, you know, in the first eight months after joining his program, I made over a hundred grand. So it was totally worth the investment. Um, you know, there's three things that you want to look at when you go to hire a mentor. Uh, this is the filter that I use when I, when I'm still hiring coaches and mentors. There's three filters that I have. First one, are they doing, have they done what you're trying to accomplish to do? You know, what you're trying to accomplish. So you're not just teaching it in theory, right? Like a lot of the college professors out there, they're teaching you something that they've never done. They just read it in books, right? Yeah, so definitely. you don't want a coach that's going to have that kind of background. Next, you want to make sure that they're consistently helping other people do what you want to do, because it's one thing to do it. And it's another thing to have the heart of a teacher and actually being able to break down the process in a simplified form that people can implement. All right. So you got to make sure that he has, or she has successful students. Third thing you want to look at is do you like and trust the person, right? Is that a, is that a person that you could connect with, you believe in, um, that is very important, right? Cause you, you're going to, it's going to help you stay accountable. You're not going to want to let that person down. You know, they're not going to ask you to do anything shady, right? So, so those are the three things that I always look at when I hire a coach. So when you're doing uh, real estate wholesaling, um, do you use a realtor to buy the houses or do you just do it yourself? Oh, I go directly to the sellers, right? That's the power of it. So, you know, the, the cool part of this is, yes, I can assign the contracts for a lot of money and make cash. But then once I've made all that cash, then I can go, hey, this one makes sense for a rental. This is a great property and I'll keep it for myself. Build passive cash flow, you know, passive income, like it talks about in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and grow my net worth. But and then keep wholesaling the rest till I have enough cash to do another one. Yeah, definitely. Huh? That seems uh, really interesting. So, uh, when you offer people for wholesaling to buy their property, what do you, you said you offer them around 10% of? Um, I, I try and make my fee, I try and make 10% of what it's worth fixed up. So that's the simple equation. Um, but are you asking like how, how, how much do I offer them and how do I offer it? Is that what you're wanting to know? Oh yeah, basically. Yeah, so first when you talk to someone that wants to sell their house, you gotta pre-qualify them. Right. So what I do is I, I talk to him about the house and the condition and I say, 
well, it sounds like it uh, needs some work. That's fine. But why don't you just fix it up and sell it yourself? You would make more money. And if they're like, well, I've thought about that. It's like, okay, well, that might be a better option for you because I'm an investor and you know, I'm going to do something similar to that. So you might be better off to fix it up and sell it for more profit. I can buy it as is quickly and you can be done quickly. You know, what do you want to do? Right. So I talk to them about their options. And if they, it's been a rental, I say, well, it sounds like it's a great rental. Why don't you just keep it as a rental? Right. So I go through the options with them. And if they go, no, I want to just be done. I want to be done with it. I want a quick offer. It's like, okay, I know that what I'm doing is what that person needs. Right. What I offer is a service to this person now. And once you identify that, I go on the appointment, build the relationship, figure out what their needs are. Uh, my calculation to figure out what I can offer is I do, I figure out the after repair value. So you can look up on Zillow, Redfin, a couple other places to figure out roughly what the property is worth fixed up. Um, or you can talk to a real estate agent or get access to the MLS, what real estate agents use and uh, figure out what the property's worth. It's called ARV, after repair value. Okay, so once you figure out that number, then you can do the math to figure out what you should pay for it, right? Or what your break-even number is going to be as a wholesaler. So the equation is very simple. You times the after repair value, times it by 0.92. And what that does is it gets rid of 8% of that total, okay? So once you drop it down to that amount, so I'm going to pull out a calculator here just to kind of walk you through an equation. So we have 0.92. Let's say the house is worth 100000 fixed up for easy math times that by $100,000. That brings us down to $92,000, right? Then you're going to subtract out how much it's going to cost to fix it up to make it worth that amount. Actually, before I say that, I'm going to say the, the 8% that you're getting rid of, when someone buys a house and fix it up to sell and sells it, they're going to have expenses. They're going to have expenses of the title company. They're going to have interest on money that they borrowed to do the deal. They're going to have fees to the real estate agent that sells it for them, right? So that 8% is going to cover all those expenses. That's why we get rid of 8%, okay? Okay. So now you're down to 92,000. Now you're going to subtract out how much it's going to cost to fix it up to make it worth that much. And you can, there's lots of ways to figure out what that is, but just to keep this short and simple, I'll just say maybe it's $20,000 to fix it up to make it worth 100,000. Now you're down to 72,000. Um, now you got to figure out how much is your flipper going to want to make, right? They're probably going to want to make 10% to 20% of the ARV. Right. That's their equation. So we'll just say break down in the middle 15%, which is 15 grand, right? 15% of a hundred thousand, 15,000. So then we're going to subtract another $15,000. That's going to go to the flipper. That's going to buy the deal from you. Cause you got to have enough. You got to have a reason for them to buy the house. Right. Yeah. So now you're down to 57,000. What that means is you have to get that property for less than $50,000. Anything you get it under for 57,000 is yours. So then when I go to the seller, I try and get the number from them. What do they want? What do they want? Time frame, all those things. And if they want 70, I say, you know, I couldn't pay that much. Maybe you should just fix it up, sell it yourself, and maybe you'll get 70. But it's just, there's no way. I'm probably going to be anywhere between 30 and 45,000, right? And I give them a big range. And I say, is there any way we can work within that price range? If we agree to anything within that price range, I make money. So most of the time they'll be like, well, let me look into it. They'll shop you around. They're not going to get what they want. They'll come back to you. You'll negotiate and you get it under contract for whatever you negotiated at. Yeah, that sounds uh, like a very uh, cool thing to do. Uh, I would just like to share everybody your, uh, to show everybody your channel, uh, Zach Booth. Uh, so everybody, if you could please check out his channel, it's really interesting. All his information that he has here. Also is uh, 40,000 in 40 days uh, challenge. And that's, that's about to be replaced the next day or two. I've got a new video intro coming in, but if you go to the playlist. Okay. Yeah. So it'll always be in the playlist. You'll be able to see the 40 day challenge right there. 40 K in 40 day. So it's the fourth playlist. Yep. That's cool. Is there anything else you'd like to share about wholesaling that? Um, I have a free resource. Uh, for everyone, if you guys want to check it out. So I call it the, the um, seven reasons why driving for dollars is the fastest way to make an absolute fortune in real estate. 
Um, it's basically a free PDF that breaks down why I use driving for dollars, why it's the best way. Uh, so you go to dfdmastery.com forward slash the number seven and free. Okay, so the number seven free. So if you guys go there, uh, I ask for your email and I'll email you the, the, the resource and then a bunch of other free information as well. So um, you guys can check that out as well. Want to make sure you guys get that gift. Yeah, that sounds great, Zach. And I'd just like to thank you for being on the show today. And I hope we can have you on again soon. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you all for watching. God bless.